we go attach this to anime characters. And when they die, we f- we are left with a sense of betrayal from the Monica. Today, we are going to count down 10 anime characters who didn't deserve to die. Okay. Number 10 is Ace from One Piece. From what I understand, he was a very loving big brother towards Luffy. And he was a well-loved character in One Piece as a whole. More loved than Zoro and Sanji. And when he died, most fingers, most, all of the fandom was very heartbroken by his death and really want him to come back to life. Number nine is Mihayo Kel, a.k.a. Mello, from Death Note. This guy, he died way too young, okay? Not only that, he died with the immense guilt that he got one of his childhood best friends killed for one... For one of the plans that he put into motion. Yes. And I feel like he should have died because they could have done more with his character than just killing him off. They could have had Melo team up with Nia and have him and Nia carry out L's legacy like L wanted them to do. While telling people to stay away from the Death Note. Number eight is Itachi Uchiha from Naruto. This guy, he been doing so much, okay? From having to kill his clan at a young age, to having his little brother hate him, to being killed by said brother, to come back to life and find out that he was the main cause of his brother's rise and fall. Yes. He died at the hand of his brother, like I said before. And when he died, he thought that his brother finally got the revenge that he wanted. And he went to the afterlife being glad that that his brother was able to avenge their clan the way he wanted him to. And when he was reanimated, he went to the afterlife again. After finally getting the closure that he and his brother really needed. Because he thought at the time that he was the main cause of all his little brother's troubles. Well, he was, but Sasuke and Itachi cleared that up. And he went to the afterlife happy. After he told him that he would always love Sasuke no matter what he does. Number seven is Matt from Death Note. Not only did we not see him in the anime, but the one time we did see him, he basically was killed off in an instant. Yeah, he got shot up by the police after he killed, after he kidnapped the president's daughter. And what makes it so bad is that after he died, one of his best friends thought that the death was his fault and said that, Matt, I'm sorry, I should not have got you into this. Personally, he should not have been shut up like the way he did, and I wish we could have seen him a little bit more in the anime than what we saw him for. Number six is Neji Yuga from Naruto. This guy, his death was one of the most unexpected ones. And when he died, most fangirls, well, all the fandom, was like, what the hell, Kishimoto? What did you just do to Neji? Why did you kill him off? And it's sad because most fangirls, or or a lot of the fandom, thought that he would be the one to help Hinata out during the, you know, help Hinata run the Yuga clan. And they actually thought that he would have overcome his curse mark thing. But I guess it would be kind of boring if they didn't have nobody of the convicts who died during the war. But his death was just the most one who nobody expected him to die. No one. Number five is Marco from Attack on Titan. This guy, his death was one of the most unexpected deaths to happen in the anime series. Not only that, but he died so brutally. 
a titan ate half his face off. And on top of that, his best friend had to discover his half body that the titan left behind. And half of the fandom, all the fandom, was just like, what the hell just happened to Margo? And another half of the fandom is not believing that it's actually him because his freckles was gone from his face when he died. Number four is Hideyoshi Nagachika from Tokyo Ghoul. This guy, not only did he die without, you know, rebuilding his friendship with one of his best friends, whose name is Kaneki, he died in the most unexpected way ever. Nobody even knows how he died, but all we know is that we all we know is that we see Kaneki carry him off into the sunset, saying, "Let's go home." And on top of that. He died with a sense of, of a missed guilt because he was the one who pushed Kaneki to go out with that girl. He was the one who basically said, Kaneki, go ahead. And he felt like that if it wasn't for him, that Kaneki to go out and date that girl, he, Kaneki would never have turned into a ghoul. And on top of that, he never really got the closure that he wanted with their friendship. Up until he, up until before he died, and that's when he told Kaneki, Let, "Let's go home," and that's when Kaneki picked him up and carried him off. Number three is Tatsura from K. This guy, he was basically at the wrong place at the wrong time when he was killed. He was murdered by the Colors King, who then tried to frame the Silver King for uh, you know his death. And when he died, almost all the fandom. And half of, and almost all of Homura was just completely heartbroken because he was like the most loved member of that whole group. He even got a reaction. His death even got a reaction out of um, Yata. And it's super sad because he didn't really do nothing to die. He was just up there on a rooftop recording for a, um, for a documentary when the, Silver, when the Colors King killed him. And it's super sad because he was just a kid at the wrong place at the wrong time, at the time of his death. Two is Fujimoto, also known as Rin and Yuki Ozan from Blue Exist. This guy, not only did he die thinking that his son hated him after his son found out that he was a half demon and Fujimoto just did not tell him, but he died in the most strangest ways because... Satan was harboring inside of him, and after Ren told him to not act like my father again, that broke his heart and and made him think that his son hated him all the time, which he really didn't. On top of that, Ren didn't really have a chance to say, I'm sorry for saying that to you, because Fujimoto just died right in front of him. And on top of that, Yukio tried to kill Ren after his death, which just made it even more sad. Number one is L from Death Note. Not only was this death the one that almost all the fans of Death Note took the hardest, but it was just so unexpected because he, because all the fans thought that he would like solve the case of Kira and just moved on with his life. No, it didn't happen like that. He died by the hands of a chick who now I cannot remember that. Well, his name in the Death Note because she thought that the plan that he had to actually to catch Kira was going to affect the life of a girl that she loved, which her name is Misa. And yeah. And when he died, almost all the fans started watching Death Note because everybody was like, what the hell just happened? Why did you kill Elle off?